Okay, so uh, we are going to take a look at these multiple choice questions right now. Let's um, take a look at number 12 first. So as you can see here, uh, you have to find the value of that expression given there, which is x to the power of 5 divided by 243, everything to the power of negative 2 fifth. Okay, now just um, before we get started on that problem, um, I just want to remind you in order to do the in order to do number 12 you do have to remember a few properties that um, we went over on day one okay so one is the power of a quotient property we are going to be distributing those powers when the fraction is raised to a power uh, the denominator and the numerators are each raised to that power so keep that in mind and also we are going to be using the negative power so any non-zero value raised to the negative power equals to the reciprocal of that value with the positive exponent. So keep those two in mind, okay? So let's go ahead and get started with number 12. I have copied it here so we can go ahead and work on it. Now whenever I deal with this problem, I always try to um, use the order of operations. So I'm going to try to rewrite what we have inside the parentheses first okay now if you look at the exponent outside we have negative 2 over 5 that kind of gives us a hint you have to rewrite 243 as something to the power of 5 so if you look over here with the n to the fifth power you'll see 243 is same as 3 to the fifth power so the first thing i'm going to do here is i'm going to rewrite the expression using 3 to the fifth power. So we have x to the fifth power over, we have 3 to the fifth power. Now don't forget, we have everything to the power of negative 2 fifth. Okay, so once again, don't forget, this is when we are going to be using the power of a quotient property. Okay, so we are going to distribute this power to each and every one of the um, terms inside so to the numerator and the denominator now let me quickly do some work here now if you're distributing you're going to multiply 5 times negative 2 fifth okay now remember when you multiply fractions you multiply numerator by the numerator denominator by the denominator so here 5 times negative 2 would be negative 10 divided by 5, that would come out to be negative 2, okay? Or you can cross out the 5 and you end up having negative 2. So let me go down here and incorporate that now. So now when we distribute the exponent, we are going to end up with x to the power of negative 2 over 3 to the power of negative 2. Now we are going to be using the next property, which is the negative powers property. We cannot have negative powers as part of our final answer, so we have to make them all positive. So in order to do that, we do have to flip the fraction. Okay, so let's write down the reciprocal of that. So that's going to be 3 squared. Now look, the exponents have become positive. Now what's the other way of writing 3 squared? If you look over here, 3 squared is same as 9. So that's going to be 9 over x squared. So that's our final answer. Now let's go back and check our solutions, our choices, and look what we have for our number 12. Choice D is 9 over x squared. I'm sorry, choice E. So for number 12, the answer is E. Okay, now let's take a look at number 13. So for number 13, again, I have copied number 13 down here. So let's scroll down and there's number 13. So to do number 13, now we have to simplify. 
So first thing we are going to do is we are going to multiply negative 3 times 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify the numerator first. Then we'll worry about the entire fraction. So negative 3 times 4 is going to be negative 12. Okay. And then anything to the power of 0 is 1. So I'm just going to write down 1 just for now. And then we have y squared. Sorry, y squared z. Okay. So since now that's done, we can write down what we have in the denominator, which is 2x cubed y z to the power of negative 2. Now as you can see here, negative 12 and 2 can be reduced, so you get negative 6. And then anything multiplied by 1, it's going to be the number itself, so we can just ignore the 1. Now look at these two powers. These are the quotient rules. So you have y to the power of 2 and y. If the bases are the same and you are dividing the exponents, you subtract the exponents. So 2y to the power of 2 minus 1. And same thing here. So if the bases are the same and if you have a quotient, you um, subtract the exponents. So you have 1 minus negative 2. And we have just x cubed, and I'm just going to leave it as part of the denominator because we like to keep all the exponents positive, okay? So now we have negative 6 times y to the power of 2 minus 1 is 1. We don't need to indicate 1 there, okay? And then here, negative times negative will become positive. 1 plus 2 is 3, so we have z cubed all over x cubed. So let's double check our answer. We don't have any negative exponents and everything has been simplified. So let's go back and check our options. And if you look at number 13, there you go. Choice D has exactly what we just solved. So choice D is negative 6yz cubed over x cubed. So that's d. I hope you got that. So now let's take a look at 14 and 15. If you look at 14, 14 talks about the equation of the horizontal asymptote for that function there, which is an exponential growth because of the base greater than 1. Now we know that one third in front of the base, that's going to cause vertical shrink by a factor of one third. X minus three, so that's going to shift three units to the right. And negative five is going to shift five units down. Now since this is an exponential growth, our graph parent function should look somewhat like that. And the horizontal asymptote is due to the vertical shift. So here, what's going to happen is um, our graph is going to shift 5 units down. So we are going to have an asymptote, horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 5 because it's going to shift down. So our graph is going to somehow look like that. So therefore here, the horizontal asymptote is going to be at y equals negative 5, which is c. Okay? Now, number 15 has to do with another exponential function. So again, let's quickly review the transformation. So we have a 2 in front of 1, uh, one third x to the power of negative 1. So the 2 is going to be vertical stretch by 2. And then this is a decreasing function. So this is exponential decay. And then we have x minus 1 as the exponent. That means one unit. It's going to, the graph is going to shift, the parent function is going to shift one unit to the right. And you have plus 2. That means the graph is going to shift two units up. Here we are trying to find the range. Remember, range is the y value. It's the output. So if you recall, now for this one, I'm just going to talk about the y, so I'm not going to incorporate all the transformations, just shifting up or down. So in this case, the graph is going to shift two units up. So that's uh, asymptote at y equals 2. 
and then this is a decay so the graph is gonna look somewhat like that bear with my graphs it's like I'm learning how to use bamboo tablet so I'm not that great with that but hopefully you can see what I'm trying to draw there okay so now remember range is the output so what's our lowest y value it's going to be 2 the graph will never cross the asymptote but it will approach the asymptote it's 2 and then what's the highest um, y value or the output it's going to be infinity since the graph is going on forever so therefore for this uh, problem D is our right answer because the lowest y value is 2, highest is infinity. Since 2 is not included, it must be a parenthesis. So the answer is D. Okay? So I hope that was um, enough explanation for you to come up with that answer.